Welcome back, everyone. So, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I would normally cover. Most of the videos that we do, they cover activity of dogs and of the dog nutters. But I really wanted to focus on the nutters in this video. You know, we, we use the blanket term dog nutter. And sometimes it doesn't, that term doesn't uh, clarify the level of nuttery that these people are involved in. So I thought I would just come up with this uh, chart. If any of you decide that you'd like to start referring to people based on their actions as one of these levels of dog nuttery, I would more than welcome you to do that, but I broke down kind of the, the behavior and the attitudes and the lifestyles of all of the, the different levels of dog nuttery, the severity of the way that they live their life, and we're going to get right into it. So the levels of dog nuttery. In the case of my channel, the phrase I use here is love the sinner, hate the dog. That's kind of like my catchphrase. The term is applied on the term that people often use, love the sinner, hate the sin. Meaning you can love or deeply care for someone, even if their behavior is wrong or bad enough where you can't associate with them. Like maybe, you know, you've had somebody in your family who, you know, they, they are... A, an alcoholic or a drug addict and all they want is money 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 or free work or you know they want something out of you you are a means to an end for them even if you can't you might not be able to associate with those people even if you love them now we as humans if your brain is working right will learn from the mistakes that you make if and when you make them it's wired into our brains to not make the same mistake twice, but sometimes people get an addiction or form a bad habit, and you may have to cut that person out of your life, even if you love or deeply care about them. Now, dog nuts, I believe, fit into one of these five categories. The level of the dog nuttery that they are at can also determine whether you can talk some sense into them from their behavior, or whether you should probably associate with them or not. This presentation is going to be more about the dog nutters, less about the actual dogs. So depending on the level of dog nuttery, if you were invited over to these people's home or their place of work or whatever, if you asked them to put their dogs away, the level of dog nuttery that they are at might determine the response that you'd get. Now, a quick disclaimer, everything I say here is my own opinion, based on my own experiences. I know many people are in the same boat with me on this. I have many people in my life that own dogs that I care deeply about. My in-laws own dogs. If there was a life or death situation that was put on me, I would protect them with my life. I love my in-laws more than I love my own biological parents. More. My sister and brother-in-law have a dog, and if something happened to them, I'm signed up to be their, uh, the next of kin to raise their children. And I would do it in a heartbeat. And I don't like to use the word hate when referring to other people. Hate is a very strong word, and there's enough going on in this world without me adding to it. There isn't anyone in this world who could make me hate them. I was abused as a child, I'm getting a little personal here, I'm not going to go too far into details, but I was abused as a child, and I was forced to overcome the hate that I held in my own heart in order to heal and move on as a person. Hate has no place in my heart, because once it takes root, it only grows one thing, and that's misery. And it's misery that the person that you hate will not share. The hatred that I have for dogs is not a hatred of a person, but of a mental disorder that leads to sin, wasting of resources, and destructive behavior. I just wanted to get that out of the way, clarify that. 
Uh, more before we begin real quick. Uh, man has mastered the art of domesticating animals. In many cases, we have even perfected the art of pitting nature against nature. Like, we love to do that, don't we? Like, uh, for example, uh, horses. Horse is a gigantic animal, and yet it submits wholly to humans. Enough even to the point where humans can force them to do heavy, heavy work that it would require like 10 people to do. Like they can plow fields or pull wagons. And this is just another testament to our intelligence. I can't point that out enough. The strongest animals do not rule this world. They do not grow enormous amounts of food, invent things the way we do. It is the smartest creatures that have conquered this planet. Now I ask you, if we're so smart, why do we need dogs? I know a lot of you are probably scratching your head and asking the same question. The claim is that dogs helped us beat nature. You hear that a lot. I, I've argued with people on Facebook. Dogs helped us survive as a species. They helped us beat nature. Like the horse, the mule, animals uh, that were once all almost owned by, by all humans. Now they're so rare uh, and have almost completely been replaced by machines. Like back in the day, rich people owned cars, the poor man owned a uh, horse and mule. And now, the poor man owns a car and only a rich man own, owns a horse. It's switched. So, the question is why do we still have frickin' dogs in 57% of households in the United States? Right? Like, why is that? Uh, if you own a dog, that pretty much automatically makes you a dog nut. However, dog ownership and the relationship that people have with their dogs is a lot different now than it used to be. So a level one dog nut. You don't see this very often. A level one dog nut is more along the lines of what you would have seen in America during the early days where much of America was agricultural. Uh, those who would have owned dogs would have kept their dogs outside. These dogs were not family, they were not pets, they would have been simply another tool for getting a job done. Now we as humans have done exceedingly well at pitting, uh, pitting nature against itself, much like the way we use cats to keep rodents away from valuable food sources. Right? Like that was the original reason that People started bringing cats about aboard ships and, and in barns because they kill rats and they kill mice that eat valuable food sources. Like cats do not eat grain. Cats do not eat uh, valuable crops. They kill the animals that do. Pitting nature against nature. So we had cats and many people had a dog on the farm to help herd the sheep keep wolves away from flocks, and to defend farm animals against, er, against wild animals. Now, I'm not defending dogs. Not, I'm not going that far. Dogs kept outside still posed a threat for attacks, but being just another animal kept outside on the farm, the risk would have been a lot lower, right? Like, you wouldn't walk into a restaurant and have a nasty frickin' pit bull jump all over you. Not back in those days. A dog nut, or a level one dog nut would not have done something that stupid. Uh, it would have been pretty common back in the day. These people would not have been kissing the dog, keeping the dog in their frickin' bed. The time of needing an animal to do these types of jobs has long since passed. Like, there is a very, very small number of people <clears throat> who use dogs to herd sheep. There are not very many people who herd sheep. Compare the number of people who herd sheep to the number of people who have dogs. Okay. It's very rare that you find a level one dog nut in today's society. A level two dog nut. Now, this would be somebody who kept a dog outside as well. <clears throat> not only as a pet, but possibly even for hunting purposes like duck hunters who wanted to bring a dog to fetch their kill when they make a successful shot. Some other hunters use dogs to track and mercilessly kill wild hogs or bears. Now these big natural animals will flee from dogs. 
I myself am a hunter. I've been a deer hunter since I was legally allowed to. I've, I've bow hunted and I've gun hunted. I haven't had a whole lot of success. But, you know, it's always, it's always a matter of, you know, is this fair? Am I giving the animal a chance? Like the animal, uh, I, pr I primarily deer hunt, but the deer has to come walking into an area where you can hit it. You don't pick up a frickin' mutt, give it a scent to track, all right, go find them, and use the advantage that the dog's nose has to ruthlessly run an animal down until it's so exhausted that it can't run anymore, only to be killed by your bullet. Like, I would not do something like that. If I, if I was there in that picture, I wouldn't be shooting the bear. The bear is much less of a danger than all those frickin' nut job hounds. Uh, even though a big powerful bear or a hog might be able to take a dog one on one, like a you know 800 pound grizzly bear would have no problem killing a, a wimpy little worthless mutt, natural animals still fear a pack of barking, snarling dogs as much as they fear humans. A bear being chased by dogs will run until it can run no further, then more than likely it will climb a tree where it stays until it gets killed. This practice is not legal in all states and is very rightfully scrutinized as being humane, inhumane, unfair, and cruel to the hunted animal, which now has a much lesser chance of surviving. These dog nuts would be less likely to view these dogs as pets and kiss them and rub on them, but more as work animals. And again, these are not as common in today's society. Level three is getting more into where we are with today's dog nuts. Between level three and level four, I would say is probably the most common. Probably level four is the most common, but you know, you get some level threes. Level three is getting more into where we are today. Oh, I'm sorry, I already read that. These dog nuts let their dog live in their home and dwell in the same places that they dwell. They take their dogs on walks and car rides. They take them to the beach. They regard their dogs as family. The level three dog nut will let their dog lick their face, sit on their lap, um, sleep at the edge of their bed. You know, they'll expose their children to dogs and they are blissfully unaware of the danger they put themselves and others in by living with their mutant. Like if you told these people that are holding their, their baby and then their frickin' piece of crap ankle biter dog next to the baby, if you told them that, hey, this dog can carry life-threatening illnesses that can be transmitted by a lick. It can put you or your baby in the hospital. Like, that would be news to them. Level 3 dog nuts would be willing to spend like around a thousand bucks to save their dog if it needed an operation. Most of these dog nuts, if given an option to save the life of a stranger or their dog, would choose the stranger. They love their dog, but not as much as their human family or friends. They still get that humans are more important than mutts. And, and these people are not completely beyond reaching, I don't believe. And these are the types of people where, if they know you don't like dogs and you have to enter their home for some reason, they say, hey, you please get the dog off of me. Please put the dog away. They will do that. They will respect the fact that you are not a fan of dogs and you can work with these people. I would not cut these people out of your life. I would avoid their dog. I would avoid, you know, touching them or entering their home if you possibly can. But these people are not beyond working with. It's still difficult. It's still you know, a travesty that they waste their resources on a worthless, filthy animal. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that these people are so beyond the point of reconciliation that you should just cut them out of your life. Because then you're going to have to cut frickin' everybody out of your life. And it's just not feasible. Let them know you don't want anything to do with their worthless mutt. And if they respect your, your um, point of view then we can live with each other. Level four, this is where things get problematic. 
Level four is where I believe things begin to get much more detrimental for society as a whole. Level four dog nuts are the people who bring their worthless mutts into stores, restaurants, parks, where there are children, places where dogs are not allowed. But most of the time, they are allowed to get away with it because people don't dare challenge them. They don't want to make any waves and they don't have any balls. They just figure, well, you know, I don't get paid enough to argue with frickin' Karen and her worthless uh, French bulldog mutant. I'm just gonna let her, you know, have the frickin' dog, push the dog around in a stroller with a, a baby cap on. You know, I really just don't want to deal with that. I don't get paid enough to deal with that. A lot of times it comes down to that. These people refer to their dogs as siblings to their children and refer to themselves as dog mom, dog dad, blah, blah, blah. They consider their dog as part of the family and if they had to choose between the life of their child or their dog, they'd have to flip a freaking coin to decide. In their eyes, the dog's life is every bit as valuable as the life of their flesh and blood children, which is unacceptable. Uh, they post about their disgusting dog on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. They do Snapchats of their dog. They waste countless amounts of time, money, and energy getting likes and attention from others, all for their worthless mutt. They post memes and wear clothes like the picture to let everyone in their path know how much they love their frickin' mutt. And mutts as a whole. These people have blurred the line between the value of human life versus animal life and even though they associate with other humans, the topic, they always try to steer the topic of conversation towards dogs. Sorry, are you a dog person? What kind of dog do you have? You like dogs? Why don't you like dogs? You know, I've had so many dogs and they're just, they're just the most wonderful companions. Level four, level four is where the mental disorder to be, begins to become apparent. Now you look at this woman, Yoga pants, messy bun, green tea, dog mom. And she's holding this frickin' wrinkle-faced mutant like a baby. Got her hand right next to the dog's genitals. And she's got the frickin' dog dressed up in a shirt. Clothing was invented for humans because we don't have fur, we don't have feathers. All we have is bare skin. Clothing was not invented for dogs. You need to get that shirt off of that frickin' worthless sack of crap, is what you need to do. No pants, bedheads, floor crumbs, fur kid. This right here is cancer, is what it is. This needs to stop. Level five, this is the one that was kind of hard to even talk about or think about because this just makes me want to hurl. So a level five dog nut is the highest form of dog nut. First of all, people in this level are abs. I just want to say right here, these people are beyond saving. These people are the equivalent of an alcoholic or a drug addict. These people uh, in this category do not value human life, period. Not even their own life. And they have a social dysfunction to an extent where they're so afraid of human interaction for fear of being judged or criticized that they cut off or limit any and all meaningful human interaction in their life. The closest thing to this person in their life is their frickin' dog. 100%. These people will not only bring their dog around everywhere they frickin' go, and, but here's the key. They will often be single. They will be single. Uh, their home or wherever it is that they are, they won't have any roommates, they won't have husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, blah, blah, blah. They'll be single. They include, but are not limited to, women who got their butt kicked by an abusive ex-boyfriend or a man who got screwed out of all his money or whatever by his ex. And now he claims all women are whores, they're all mental, they're all crazy B-words, etc., etc. And they're now convinced that all human interaction, right, they open themselves up to somebody else and they were unlucky enough to get screwed hard. And now they believe that all human interaction can only result in pain and letdown. Their sole freaking companion is their dog. 
And this is the category where, as their sole entity that they interact with, these people will substitute family and friends, or even a lover, with a dog. These people are brain damaged, dysfunctional. And the what I want you to watch out for, you hear this a lot. This is the key phrase they use, right? Dogs are better than people. If you hear a dog not use this phrase, dogs are better than people, you can be certain that if the dog wanted it, they would give it to them. And you know what I mean. I don't have to spell that out for you. In the news article. Um, level 5 continued here. This was just a freaking joke. Obsessive dog disorder. You got more than one dog. You greet your dog before your spouse. Because dog's more important. Your dog's comfort comes before you. I gotta sacrifice my own, my own life for my dog. Your house is littered with dog toys. Because you're a freaking, you know, living squalor. You'd rather hang out with your dogs than go out because you're socially dysfunctional and your dog eats better than you. That's not, that's another thing. People giving freaking T-bone steaks and expensive meals to dogs. And what do they do? Just <laughs> gone. You know, something that was crafted or harvested through human intelligence and hard work, the sweat of the brow of humans, and you give that to a worthless mutt. What are they going to do? Oh! <laughs> They're going to swallow it, and it's going to be gone, and that effort is going to be for naught. You do not give valuable things to dogs. Nothing of value. Someone who is a level 5 dog nut, to continue, will not respond to facts and reason. Like I said, you cannot reach them. Their ability to perceive reality has become so warped by whatever it is that they went through, that they shut the world out, and they do not, will not, have no plans to let it back in. To them, the lack of judgment, because dogs cannot judge. Their brains are not capable of making judgment. Uh, because they cannot judge is the most valuable thing in this world. To be valued as they are and loved no matter what is more valuable than anything the outside world could possibly offer them. That one video with that woman. A dog won't cheat on me. My dog doesn't judge me. A dog's love is unconditional. Yeah, right. If, <laughs> quit feeding them and see how long that, that lasts. Uh, anything they say that speaks of their relationship with their dog as different from any other human and special in a way that it could only ever be with this dog. That's a guarantee that these people are involved with their dog. And you know what I mean. To such an unhealthy level that unless they themselves put them put themselves through therapy and more than likely even medication, they will never, ever, ever recover from their dog addiction. Because that's what this is. It's an addiction. It's an addiction that you might not immediately see negative side effects. So they keep up with it. The negative side effect is... All of us having to put up with your mental disorder and not being allowed to condemn you for it. Being scrutinized by others to condemn you for your mental disorder. Pointing out the fact that you need help. Level five, and level 5 dog nuts have helped bring dogs to the point on the pedestal of human value that they currently are. They want to normalize dogs in homes as much as possible so that no one will suspect what they're doing. Disgusting and evil things with these mutants behind closed doors. The propaganda is real, people. And more than likely, you know someone who is a level 5 dog now. You'll see them on the news making out with dogs. You'll see them putting their face in the dog's face. The kissing and rubbing all over a dog. And this is something that else that blows my mind. They'll sneakily stroke the dog's genitals. It's like they can't help it, even though the camera's pointed right at them. You see them, they're petting the dog's belly. And what do they do? They'll quit give the dog's genitals a stroke. I've seen it multiple times. It's almost like 
it's almost like you gotta rewind the video to check to see if they actually did it, but you don't want to. Your eyes don't lie to you. You can trust your eyes, trust your mind. Avoid these sick, sick-minded people at all costs. It doesn't matter if they're your friend, your family, your spouse. These people want to engage in relationships with animals that are evil. Let them dabble in their evil ways without you. The message that I'm trying to get across here. There may have been a time in the history of this country, of this world, where dogs fulfilled a position in human territory. They were kept out, outside, friggin' outside, not inside, 24-7, and used to guard other animals in exchange for food and shelter. They had to earn their friggin' keep. There may have been a time when dogs were not worthless, resource, sucking scavengers. There may have been a time when people put up with dogs so that they could, uh, they could put up with the lesser of two evils. They had to choose between a dead farm animal or a frickin' stinking mutt that but only lives outside. So I only have to deal with it when I go outside. But that time has passed, people. It's passed. People don't live on a frickin' farm in a farmhouse with no air conditioning, no electricity, and uh, n n a need for a worthless mutt. There's no reason for anyone to own a dog of any kind, service mutt included. And people might get, you know, stiff on that fact. But the fact of the matter is that any job that a dog can supposedly do can be done better by humans. You need to, you need to stop wasting your time with mutts. You need to stop. Human interaction is so valuable. All you have to do is look up how valuable human interaction is. We are wired our brains are wired to interact with one another and to care and, and to love one another and to convey our thoughts to each other. We don't do that with dogs. So you can't grow. You, your brain doesn't work right if you associate with dogs and by extension by, with, with these level 5 dog nuts, level 4 dog nuts. Human interaction, I want to make a point, is so valuable. And we cannot allow these deranged dog nuts to water it down with their rhetoric and lies. Because they are liars. Do not associate with them or the foolishness that they have chosen to become involved with. That's my message for tonight. I know this video is coming in at a really weird time. But I've got the day off tomorrow. And uh, I decided to stay up and make this video. And like I said, if... Anybody who is a dog anti-dog channel out there is uh, digesting, breaking down an article, and you want to point out the fact that a certain person, based on their behavior or whatever it is, is a certain level of dog nut, be it level more than likely three to five, you may do that. You have my permission. You're not stealing my thunder. You're not riding my whatnot. You may do that. You have my permission. I encourage you. And I also encourage you to love the sinner, hate the dog.